In this video, I'm going to show you my five favorite tips for cropping. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Before we learn the five cropping tips, we first need to get out the crop tool, which you can do by pressing the letter C on your keyboard. Tip number one is to click and drag. Most people begin cropping by using these cropping handles, but you can quickly click and drag to make a brand new crop marquee. Afterwards, you can use the handles for fine tuning your crop. Tip number two is how to use absolute dimensions. Sometimes you might need your photo to be a specific size, like when uploading to a website that has a maximum size for pictures. To make sure your photo is the exact right size, set your mode to unconstrained, and then type in the exact size you want the photo to be. Now the area inside this crop marquee is exactly 3000 by 2000 pixels. And if you want, you can click and drag inside the marquee to reposition it. This leads nicely into tip number three, which is to take advantage of non-destructive cropping. Using our same example, let's say we need our final photo to be 3000 by 2000 pixels but we're not exactly sure what part of the photo we want to use. In that case, we can use non-destructive cropping. First, set your crop to the proper size, which we've already done. Next, apply the crop from the context toolbar or by pressing enter on your keyboard. At this point, it looks like we've lost a lot of our picture, but the photo is actually still there. It's just hiding outside of our document area. To use these hidden parts of the photo, get out the move tool. And if your photo's layer is locked, you will need to unlock it by pressing on this lock icon. Now we can click and drag to move around our photo. You can even resize the photo and it will still be kept inside this document area that's 3000 by 2000 pixels. I love non-destructive cropping, but if you want to, you can permanently get rid of the parts of the photo that are outside of your document. All you need to do is right-click on the photo's layer, and then press Rasterize and Trim. Now if I move the photo around, you can see that the cropped parts of the photo are gone. I still have more I want to show you though, so I'm going to press Command or Control Z to undo until I get my photo back to the way it started. The next tip is to make cropping presets. By default, Affinity already comes with a few presets that you can access from this gear icon. For example, we can set our crop to a one by one ratio. Now we can resize our crop and it will always stay in a one by one ratio. To make your own cropping presets, first make sure your mode is set to custom ratio. Then type in the ratio you want to use. I'll make mine five by three. Just as before, we can resize our crop and it will stay in a five by three ratio. To make this a preset to use in the future, open the presets menu and then press on the menu at the top right. Then press create preset. Now we just need to give it a name and choose a category for it. I'll keep the default name Affinity gave it and then save it in the common ratios category. Now, if you look in the presets menu, you'll see that my preset has been added. If you want to organize your presets, just press on this menu again and choose manage presets. From here, you can click and drag to rearrange presets, or you can select one of the presets you've made and then rename or delete it. When you're done organizing, 
you can close out of the dialog box and everything will be automatically saved. And finally, tip number five is how to straighten a photo. Using the crop tool, you can straighten a photo by pressing on straighten and then click and drag over the area that should be straight. In this case, the horizon line should be straight. Once you release the mouse, Affinity will automatically rotate the photo so that the area you drew over is straight. And if you want to continue rotating the photo, you can hover your cursor right outside the edge of the document, and then you can click and drag to rotate the image. After you're done rotating, don't forget to bring your crop in a little bit to hide the transparent edges that we made while rotating the image. And to finish the video, I have one last bonus tip for you. Using the crop tool, you can actually crop outwards to make your document larger. With extra space in your document, you can add all sorts of things, but as a simple example, I'll add a white background. If you want to learn more tips for editing your pictures, then you can check out my free course in the video description. This course gives you 10 simple steps that you can use to make any of your photos look amazing. Well, thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.